Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Tandy Rides. I'm sorry if you don't like this outfit but I'm trying to film four videos today and I don't want to get changed. So today it is April 22nd which is pretty much end of April which will make this a third of the way through the year and I thought I would do like a Goodreads reading challenge, kind of update, like a review of what I've been reading this year so far. I set my goal to be 20 books read across the entirety of 18 so I thought like you know I'm in college I have a lot of work to do now and I won't have time to read but in four months I have read 30 of those 20 books which should mean I read like 90 in the entire year so yeah I thought I would do like mini updates throughout the year so I don't have to review lots of books in one go so let's begin the first book I read this year was Caravel. Put, I'll put pictures here if you want. And this is a book, I loved it. It's basically like everything I could ever want. The weird mix of like reality and fantasy put together. And, oh, what was that? I enjoyed that it was very mystery, it was very like clue finding. It reminds me of those like free apps you can get where you got like look around the room to find hints to move on to the next one. That's a really bad description. But yeah, I very much love this one, and it set off my books of the year like with high expectations. The second book I read this year was The Raven Boys, after many months of people recommending it to me. I finally got it, I read it, I loved it, there's nothing else you can say for it. Because each of the characters I loved, they're all so different but they fit together so well, and I love the friendship. Also, this is another one where I loved like, the reality and fantasy combination. Oh my god. Oh, the Raven Boys got five stars and Caravel got four stars. So the first two books of the year were very good. So I was probably very disappointed with the next one. This one is called Showstopper. I think that I've, I've, I'm pretty sure I've made a video review to this. So I won't go into too much detail. But I'll just say that I, I, I didn't like anything about it. Actually, I did like something about it. Let's check my review. So basically I bought this book because it was shiny. It took me a long time to read. I didn't like the lack of world building. I didn't like the insta love. But I did enjoy the fact that it was a circus. Apart from it had so much potential and went nowhere. This book had two stars but seeing as there was so little I liked about it, it was probably should be one star. But I feel bad because it's shiny. The, the next book I read is Unhooked. I gave it three stars. I have pretty much no memory of what this is about. Besides, it's like a Peter Pan retelling. And... what do I remember? I remember the first like few chapters are set in the real world and I was so bored. I think I really enjoyed the setting about it. I think I enjoyed some aspects of all the characters. Just that the two female characters who are meant to be friends, I can't remember the names of, I really didn't like. This is a terrible review, but all I remember is that I like, it was alright. I think it's more for like very specific audiences that I'm not in. The fifth book of the year was Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare, and Cassandra Clare in my eyes can do no wrong. Apart from the size of the book, I don't know if you can see it down here, but it's a massive book. It took me so long to read. And I love her so much. I loved everything about the book. Just that, does it really need to be like six or seven hundred pages long? And it's not even like it's like this size page. It's double this. So it's basically like a 1200 page book. So yeah, loved everything about it. Just too much. Oh, this was also a reread because I got Lord of Shadows over Christmas, but I didn't remember what happened to Lady Midnight, so I reread it to refresh my memory. So that is all January's books. So basically, I enjoyed three of them and two of them not so much. So we're on about like a 60% goodness rating right now. The first book I read in February was The Dream Thieves, so sequel to The Raven Boys. Also, very much love this. I think I. Oh, what was that? I spent a lot of time debating which one I liked more because I think the Raven, not Raven, yeah, the Raven Boys plot I think I liked more, but the Dream Thieves I loved a lot more because Ronan. So the next one is an advanced read copy. I got this as an ebook from NetGalley, so shout out to them. And this one also has a review somewhere on here. If I remember, I'll leave links to the Showstopper review and this one in the description. 
So this is A Thousand Perfect Notes. It's the debut novel from... I forgot her name. She, Paper Fury. What's Paper Fury's name? Kate. Kate. I'm checking. And for a debut novel, I was just completely blown away by everything about this. Let's check what I liked. My memory's terrible, so this is going to be a lot of me referring to my laptop and just like rambling aimlessly. So first of all, the cover of this is beautiful. I've seen like the proof copies around and the front is a butterfly and the back is also a butterfly. So if you have them put together, it makes one big butterfly. And I'm just so sad I don't have it, so I'm going to have to buy it. Things I liked about this book. Plot. It's very different to lots of contemporaries because it's very fueled by characters rather than events. I love the style in which the story is told. It's very conversational and it pulls you in straight away. I love like, some family moments, more like sibling moments in this book. I love the food. I love the friendship. I love the fact that there's a romance, but it isn't even romance until basically the very last page. I loved it so much. This book like made me tear up. It's very emotional. It's very it's a music book. And if you're someone like me who is very much is very involved, I'm not involved in music. I just really like music. To be really like music, this is a book for you. And I gave this five stars because for a debut novel, I was like stunning. This deserves like the world and more. The next book is Song of Achilles, which at this point quickly became my favourite book so far. I've recently become, not recently, like the past two or three years I've become very much a lover of Percy Jackson, like Rick Riordan books, and very much about Greek mythology. So this is about, this is Greek mythology, this is a song of Achilles. And I'm just going to say that for the last like 30, 40 pages I was literally crying tears streaming down my face through these last pages. This book broke me and I love it so much for that. Because I always say like as a joke that, you know, bits and books make me cry, but no book has actually made me physically cry until this one. This is like top 10 favourite books all time, probably top 5. Just, I have no fault with this at all. <coughs> so that one obviously got 5 stars. I got a lot of 5 stars at the start of the year, it went I think slightly downhill from there. So my second advanced read copy of the year was To Kill a Kingdom, which is a debut novel by... Yeah, Alexander Christ Christo Christo and Killer Kingdom. It's kind of, in some ways, it's like a Little Mermaid retelling, but it's not a retelling. If it's a retelling where Eric murders mermaids and Ariel murders like pirates, yeah, it's a retelling. But it's kind of like a spin off, it's an reimagination of the story, and I love this so much. I love pirates, I love mermaids. This is like the ultimate book for those kind of fantasy lovers. Not fantasy like mythical creature, forest, fairy, woodlands fantasy, but like ocean fantasy. Like this is the like, book for you. Five stars. And Lord of Shadows came next, also five stars. And there's not much I can say about this besides I loved a lot of it, but also why is it so long? Oh, Lord of Shadows was also the first book I read in March. So March is happening now. So second book of March was Anna Dressed in Blood, which is up here somewhere. It's a reread. Because I read it like a few years ago. I remember liking it, but I'm t I have like a book of lists I like. A book of lists. I have a list of books I like, but don't remember anything of. And that's on it. So I'm trying to get through this list. Because I remember like, it's my favourite book. I'm trying to recommend it to someone, just I don't know why I liked it or even what happened at all. So the next book is The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. And if you're on Instagram, looking at like books and book bloggers you've more than definitely seen this this is everywhere i look which is a shame because i didn't like it at all <laughs> okay i gave it such a low rating because i found it so boring this book is marketed as fantasy but like the fantasy only starts like two thirds of the way in the book and by that point i was lost it's very slow and it's very long for what it is it relies too much on fairy tale logic, you know, like, if something's going to happen, it's meant to. If something wants you to find it, you'll find it, that kind of thing. And, you know, I, I don't like that. But yeah, I gave this... Two stars? Two stars. Because I liked it a bit, I just didn't love it, and there was more negatives than positives. After that comes Final Draft by Riley Redgate, which gets four stars. This reminds me a bit of um, Van Gogh up here, where it's a girl, she writes fan fiction, it's, you know, 
if you are in a fandom or you like things, if you're a fan of something, you will love this. If you love that book, you will love this. It's basically about Layla's obsession with artistic perfection and how the growth of her writing like, corresponds with her personal growth. And that's something I can relate to, so if you are an author, a writer, a fan, a reader, this is for you. I feel like I've got to the point where I'm not reviewing it, I'm just saying what I remember and like rambling. The next one is Cat Clark We Are Young, also an advanced read copy ebook, shout out to Met Galley. Can they sponsor me? It's probably 4.5, not quite full 5 stars, but this is a book where if you love YA and you love... Oh my laptop's playing. And if you love books about teenagers who actually act like teenagers, this is for you. This is a book about like death, suicide, lost, lost, loss, and how they all like affect your life when you're so young. And I read this so quickly. I love this. I love Cat Clark. Next book of March is The Red Pyramid by Rick Riordan. It's the first one in the King Chronicles. And I bought the first two because there was like an offer on. And I don't think I'm going to continue with this series because I liked it because it's Rick Riordan and, his, and it has his like mythology tie-ins, it's Egyptian, I'm very excited by that. But from, I didn't enjoy it nowhere near as much as the Percy Jackson ones or the Heroes of Olympus ones. There's just something different about it and I know it should be different because it's a different series, it's different characters. But it's different in a way that I'm not interested. I think this one has a lot more mythology than the other ones and that kind of like took over the storyline of it. I didn't really care about the characters either. Next is The Astonishing Colour of After, which I gave three stars and I can't remember anything about this besides... Her mother turns into a bird and there's a lot of stuff about colour and it's very long and it took me so long to read. Now we have Half Bad by Sally Green and I've seen so many good things about this trilogy. Trilogy, yeah. I get five st not five stars, I get four stars because I really did enjoy this book. I loved a lot of things about it. Just that I don't think the hype around it accurately portrays what the book is. I remember reading people saying it's like their favourite back, favourite back, favourite book of all time and things it, like that. Like it had so much hype, it was put on such a high pedestal and I did enjoy it but I don't think it quite lived up to the hype. Then I'll start I read The Scorpio Races by Maggie... I, can't, I don't know how to pronounce her name. But I've, led, I've been led to believe that she can also do no wrong. This was five stars. Five stars? This was five stars. I really did love this. I love the characters. I love the storyline and like this new world she created that it is a real, realistic world with that little fantasy element that keeps it exciting. I think that's something she specialises in and she's going to become one of my favourite authors. She is the uh, Cassandra Clare to me. Does no wrong. Next up is Words and Deep Blue by Kath Crowley and this is another book where if you want teenagers, teenagers who act like teenagers this is for you. And also this is a book about books. So that by default gets a high rating. It got five stars. You need to read that. And the final book of March was Everything Everything. I don't know who you're by either. Nicola Yoon. I gave this three stars. I might drop it down to two. So this book came out a while ago and it was huge. It was like the new thought in our stars or something. And I read it and I was so underwhelmed. I think I might write a review but I don't know. But I, this book had a lot more negatives and positives to me. But I think that might just be because I'm not like a romance way person. And I didn't really care about it. Okay, we are finally into April. The first book of April was Knife Will Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness, which was... Okay, let's just say. This book has been on my shelf for literal years. The entire trilogy has been on my shelf. Been on my shelf for years. My aunt gave them to me as like a birthday or Christmas present years ago. And I hadn't read them until now. So I remember picking up the first book at the time, reading the first page and being like, oh, it's written in the accent and I don't want to read that because I won't get into it, it'll confuse me a bit. But now that accent is like the most unique voice I've like ever read in a book. 
Life of Never Letting Go got four stars because I really did enjoy it. It wasn't like the best book of all time, but it was very, very good. And I read the Ask and the Answer later in the month, which also got four stars. So between reading Life of Never Letting Go and the Ask and the, Ans Ask and the Answer, I went back to reread one of my like childhood series. And this series was like the girls series. Is it called that? Girls. Yeah. Girls in Love, Girls in Depression, Girls Out Late and Girls in Tears. And that's by Jacqueline Wilson. And when I was younger I was obsessed with Jacqueline Wilson. And I read this series. They're, all the books are like 150 pages long. Which is why I thought I'd just binge read them to get my um, book count up. Even though I was already over at the time. But yeah. Oh, when I was younger I loved them but now I've let's have a look that one got three stars that one got two stars three stars two stars these books are because they're about teenagers they focus on a lot of teenage issues like falling in love breakups that but these three girls in the book they're best friends all the bad things happen to them one of them fakes a boyfriend because she's jealous of her other friends having boyfriends. She also gets an eating disorder. Why does she get an eating disorder? Oh, both of her friends are skinnier than her and they get into like this modelling competition and she basically she develops an eating disorder because she wants to be skinny. And then she sees someone who's too skinny and changes her mind. They go out late and basically kind of get kidnapped by some guys. One of them one of them has the worst luck. She ha she meets this random guy, her older boyfriend, who's trying to pressure her and he drugs her. And then she also has an online boyfriend who turns out to be a creepy old guy. Like, all the bad things happen to these girls. And when I was younger, I loved it, because I think I just loved teenage drama. So I read these when I was probably 12 or 13. So I was kind of their age, maybe a little younger. But I loved the drama at the time. But reading them now, they seem, like, so damaging to person that age, seeing that they are 13, 14 across this entire series. So after reading this series I was still stuck in my mind of a childhood nostalgia. So I started rereading The Princess Diaries. I read the first one because I loved these when I was younger. So Jacqueline Wilson, she was like my primary school, like she was my author in primary school. Meg Cabot, she was probably still primary school, early secondary school. Because I think in the start of Princess Diaries, Mia is like 14 or 15. So I think my parents just found me books about young teenagers my age and gave them to me. So Princess Diaries is about people the same age as the previous series, but it's, it, they're so good. They're like a fun light read. It's not like terrifying drama or... What was it? Comparing it to the rest of the books I read, there's no end of the world, there's no dying, there's no lots of drama. But they're really enjoyable reads even though nothing much happens. So I read the first one which got three stars. Three stars means I liked it. Three stars, I liked it. It got three stars. And the second one also got three stars because I like them. They're not the kind of books that you love and they become your favourite books but they're just a good read. Hmm. Good reads. In between the first and second, I read a book called Playlist for the Dead, which I also read a long time ago, but I don't remember what happened. And even though I read it like literally last week, I still don't remember what happened. And the most recent book came because I watched Love, Simon twice, so I thought, you know, it's finally time I would read Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda, which got five stars and it owns my heart now. It's made me feel like all cute and mushy on the inside. It's one of those. But seeing as I watched the film first, then read the book, I'm going to see my big comparisons are they get to the drama straight away. And there's a lot more drama in the book involving like the friends and all that kind of thing. And they like this more because the relationship with Blue develops more because you have more of the emails, less of like the important ones and more like just the random conversations. I love that. And they also love, like, okay, in the film, they find out who Blue is, and then you have, like, five minutes and the film ends. But in this, I like it because you find out who Blue is, and then you have, like, another, a lot of, like, a few chapters to develop this relationship more as real people, and I love that. So, 
I think that made it onto like my favourite books of the year. That definitely made it onto my favourite books of the year. Five stars. I don't know how to end this video. I don't know if this is any good. It's probably so long. So if you watched this point, thank you. In the comments below, let me know what you've been reading this year so far. Let me know your favourite book of the year. What's your least favourite book of the year? Let me know if you've read any of the books that I've read this year and like, what are your thoughts on them? So thank you for watching this video and I will see you next time. Bye.